Good morning, I'm Mark Varley. The Narcotrend team have invited me to give a brief session on my choice of processed EEG hot topic. I've not received any payment. I hope to introduce and enthuse you to discover and look at the density spectral array display on your monitors a little more closely. I think we'd agree that the index values the processed EEG monitors produce don't always give us the whole picture. They're not directly related to the underlying neurophysiological processes and are often commercially secret and not available for scrutiny. So what does the uh, processed EEG monitor show us um, with, with respect to density spectral array? So DSA is currently available on the standalone Narcotrend and Sedline monitors and as a free upgrade on the BIS using the unilateral strips. DSA is a non-proprietary signal processing technique which displays the component frequencies of the EEG as they change over time. The Narcotrend is particularly advanced and offers the ability to alter the scale of the EEG and DSA amongst other parameters. As we'll see, this is a great way to view EEG information during the maintenance period of anesthesia. So, some basics. Rhythms are important for the brain to control information patterns. In a nutshell, anesthetic agents take over the brain and just generate oscillations which are outside of the normal range that the brain operates in, which makes it difficult for the various parts of the brain to communicate with each other. We observe these oscillations with the EEG, and you'll have heard expert recommendation that appreciating the raw EEG under anesthesia is a valuable skill. The spectrogram allows us to recognize these oscillations and apply some basic neuroscience to identify a brain state which is consistent with anesthesia. So the EEG is broken down into its component frequencies and by a Fourier transform is uh, displayed as a power spectrum. The height of these mountains indicates the power or how big these oscillations are at various frequencies. Here we see a really big peak of slow and delta waves, and here a smaller peak of alpha oscillations. The power spectrum is usually created from a few seconds worth of EEG, in this case around about five seconds, which is good for observing quick changes during induction, but not so useful for monitoring changes over time during the maintenance phase of anesthesia, for instance. But by stacking multiple power spectrum mountain ranges next to each other, we can observe these changes. Here we see those tall, high mountainous peaks of slow waves, a valley in between, another range of mountains with our alpha oscillations, and then we run out to this flatter area, which is blue like the sea, where there's very little EEG activity. On our monitors, this diagram is flattened like a map, and we take a top-down view. Imagine flying over these oscillations from low to high, flying over the mountains, down into the valley, back over this mountain range and out into the sea where there's very little EEG activity. And this is a typical spectrogram for propofol in a young brain. That we can identify all that from this pretty picture really starts to illustrate the value of looking at the EEG in this way. But let's dive a little deeper and look at different drugs. Drugs have different EEG signatures and act on different receptors and brain locations. Some of these differences are pretty subtle, but some are much more obvious. When we see the density spectral array, these differences between drugs become really easy to appreciate. And as anaesthetists, we're very good at pattern recognition, but the spectrogram also makes the neuroscience come to life. Let me show you a typical anaesthetic. This is a young brain undergoing a propofol-based anaesthetic monitored with a narcotrend. We don't really need those index values to identify this is the classical pattern of propofol-maintained anaesthesia with a deep river and high mountains. These yellow triangles are where I've marked specific events during the operation. And having stopped the infusion, we see these slow and delta waves decay away and these alpha oscillations increase in frequency before they too dissipate to a broadband of higher frequency oscillation. And at this point, we see the patient awake and extubation occur. We are actively observing the brain emerging from those rhythms that our drugs create. Now I'd like to show you something different, building on the utility of these spectrograms. These are some density spectral array traces I've taken during the maintenance phase of propofol-based anesthesia recorded with bilateral BIS strips. Notice how the power, that color, and the width of these alpha oscillations changes with advancing age. These clinical examples illustrate the reduction in alpha band power with advancing years. We can hardly expect the aging brain to produce the same power oscillations as the young brain. 
In patients over 60 years old, intraoperative alpha power correlates with their pre-op cognitive performance. This 94-year-old actually has pretty good alpha power for his age, and I'd not really expect to identify any. Indeed, brain age is a physiological construct rather than just being chronological, as some older patients do have excellent alpha power, which correlates with an excellent pre-op cognitive status. Again, one can recognise patterns, and it's fairly easy to identify a young brain on the EEG, or DSA, from the alpha power. What I observed in my own practice is clearly demonstrated in the literature. These DSA traces are taken from patients of increasing age from the age of one up to around 90 during the maintenance phase of propofol-based anesthesia. See these alpha oscillations reduce in frequency and power as the patients age. There's a significant fall in alpha power from the late 60s onwards. Most processed EEG monitors use an age-naive algorithm to measure the depth of anesthesia built around descriptive features identified from the EEG in middle age. As you can imagine, that algorithm, which has no idea the age of the brain it's monitoring, may not work so well down here, where the power in the EEG is very high and the frequency is higher, or here, where the power in the EEG is very low. The Narcotrend is unique in having an age-adjusted algorithm and is designed for use from birth and is able to compensate for these predictable effects of age on the EEG, as well as identifying developing infant brains which have an immature EEG. It's useful to be able to adjust the scale of the monitor so you can see those alpha oscillations in older or frailer patients as they're usually of lower power and therefore smaller. In this 70 year old male, we can hardly see those alpha oscillations at all. But by adjusting the scale on the Narcotrend spectrogram, we can clearly see those lower power alpha oscillations that the older brain is producing rather like turning up the volume. The DSA and EEG should always be interpreted in the context of the patient's age and the scale of the graph. But it's not just about age. Here's two 44 year old patients having the same operation the same day with the same technique using the same monitor. Notice the difference in alpha power between these two patients. The brain age effect is not just chronological. That all these comorbidities can accelerate brain age has been demonstrated in the sleep literature and recently in the anaesthetic literature. The power of these alpha oscillations seems to be important as the vulnerable brain phenotype describes patients with a low alpha power and a higher probability of birth suppression, which may be a marker of risk for post-operative delirium. This low alpha power may be a marker for a reduced neurocognitive reserve now, finally, visualizing the funny drugs. With DSA, it's possible to see the effects of ketamine, which can confuse some processed EEG algorithms. During a TIVA-based anesthetic, it's characteristic to see a temporary increase in the frequency of these higher frequency oscillations, which can last for up to an hour. Using the Narcotrend, I've applied a marker at the point where I've given a subhypnotic dose of the drug. And we can see that characteristic increase in uh, oscillation frequency after around about two minutes. This is a fantastic real life lesson in applied neuropharmacology and solves one of those perennial problems with index based systems. So density spectral array. Anesthesia is about modulating oscillations in the brain. This is easy to see with DSA. It's neuroscience versus dimensionless numbers. We can appreciate brain age and brain vulnerability and differentiate between our different drugs and their mode of action and assess the depth of hypnosis and our emergence pattern. And this really isn't the future, this is the now. and is available on all of the main brands of processed EEG monitor. It's worth comparing the feature sets of the various monitor. Some have more limited implementation of DSA than others. For instance, it's useful to be able to flag events and adjust the EEG and DSA scales for pediatric and aging brains as I've demonstrated. If you've got any questions or are interested in processed EEG monitoring, don't hesitate to get in touch with me and enjoy the rest of your day.